Hard Knocks, Last Chance University all collide in this new series. Coach King Sponge is making his rounds around the nation to help teams in need. For those that haven't seen, Last Chance U at a high level is pretty much a show that highlights schools, programs that are giving players, in essence, their last chance at the community college level to make it to the next level. So how's this gonna work here in NCAA football? Well, Coach King Sponge is gonna hop into a program. We're gonna recruit only one-star prospects we're gonna choose five of those prospects. The goal is to see how these five players progress throughout their career and see what they can do, not only for the school, but for themselves and if they can get to the next level. We're looking for the hungriest one stars, the ones that really wanna prove themselves, the ones that feel like they were underrepresented, under-recruited, got just counted out. So we're gonna give them a chance and see what they can do with it. Quick housekeeping, each time we do this series, we're gonna start at level 15. Uh, that's just to pump recruiting trades, in essence, to be the one-star connoisseur as we look and find as many one-stars as we can. Hard Knocks recruiting looks a little like this. We don't care about any of the sliders, what position they are, anything. If they even have interest in Akron, we just jump in to the recruiting board and we're going to sort it by one-star caliber players. And just like that, we're going to go down the list and start recruiting just about any one-star recruit and see if they have that juice, that sauce, what it takes to be a dog. We got our board of 35 one-star recruits. We're gonna have to be active week in, week out, just sorting and filtering and getting new one-star recruits in the pipeline. Now let's start scouting them out, see if anyone has that hidden potential to be an absolute machine here for the Akron Zips. Let me give you a quick peek at the process behind this. So uh, the first round of 35 one-stars, I liked six of them. We're gonna do this each and every week until we fill out this board. 24 one-stars we're bringing in all one stars and i underestimated really the competition level that some of these schools have for one star prospects i mean some of them were flying off the boards in the first couple of weeks i went through probably 300 plus one star prospects uh, and came out with this group of 24. let me know in the comments what you think because i think going in future hard knock rebuild series i am going to at least extend it open to two stars as well because those are some under recruited guys that like to prove things as well. So let me show you all now the stars of the show going forward. John Hall here as a one star was a plus 10 find and he had low 80s man and zone and high 80s speed. I'm big on Julius Price here coming out of high school. Uh, we landed a 64 overall scrambling quarterback with high 70 speed and high 70 throw power and accuracy. Meet John Hall. Gary Willis. Julius Price, Zach Edwards, and Charles Oliver. Julius Price in a crowded quarterback room is going to have to start standing out at practice to make his name known. I think we're going to use our redshirt eligibility on him year one as well so he can just learn, develop, and continue to grow. Same thing can be said for our freshman receiver, Charles Oliver. He's going to have to do a lot of homework. <laughs> John Hall, now redshirt freshman, up to 72 overall, plus six overall after the offseason, had the highest development rate out of anyone else on this roster. 90 press, 87 man, 79 zone, coming out of high school and just fresh off a year in the training room. So this guy, by the time he gets to his third, fourth year here at Akron, he is going to be maybe one of those dudes that we talked about that could get to the next level. Kowski is going to be in his last year here with those numbers and those stats. He will be the quarterback. But uh, this is an important year for Price and Jones to battle for that backup position and see if they can keep progressing. Charles Oliver is developing a little bit, but honestly, Gary Willis was working hard in the offseason, and man, he is neck and neck with everyone else here in this room. At cornerback, a couple of our one-star storyline focus guys are going to be in the spotlight this year, uh, specifically John Hall and Blake Davis, as well as some depth snaps for Swanson. So um, this will be intriguing to see. Akron, Marshall, we're jumping in in this game to check out and see what some of our defensive prospects can do getting their first real action in college football year three you know I'm, I'm sure it feels like an eternity for some of these guys but uh their time has come and it's time to show them what they're made of so 
Uh, can Akron get things rolling here against Marshall? Well, let's let's check it out. There's Hall. I'm, I'm playing as Hall, getting his first real start here in the league in the MAC division. So if Edwards here, is that number 58? That's number 54, so it's a different Edwards. That's not our Edwards as we make a tackle with Edwards. I guess they just score six on us, but hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. But I think we got some star pieces to work with. Storyline of year three. Jankowski, you know, had a great year and all, but he and his mentorship provided an awful lot for Julius Price, getting him up to an 80 overall before we even get to training. Julius Price spelled Jankowski for a couple games this year when he got injured and came in for 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns, five interceptions, not bad, as well as adding 357 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns of his own. So this is encouraging stuff to see. On defense, John Hall, you see that right, was on fire this season with only 21 tackles, but hey, that's not what a DB is really focused on. He had a sack and three interceptions. That's the highlight. Stepping into year four, junior redshirt seasons for John Hall, Blake Davis. They're taking a step into the DB one and two position. Going to have to lead this team. And then Harold Wright also developing into a solid safety. And then even Ryan Miller, a guy we picked and weren't too high on. Uh, I think he was a 61 overall coming out of high school. Is actually now in a position to start as well. So a lot of hard knock type players uh, getting the big start. Now Julius Price and Nick Jones still in a battle, but I think Julius Price did enough last year in relief and has a year of experience and learning on top of Nick Jones. Uh, Nick Jones has the slight edge and speed and throw power, but Julius Price is a much more accurate, reliable option. So I think we're going to stick with him and give him his first shot at being the starter for the Akron Zips, his fourth year on the team. He stuck with it through the highs and lows, the tribulations, and has got himself into a position to lead this team. Zach Edwards here, our one star, made a decision in the offseason to change positions. He went to left outside linebacker, originally an MLB, but um, he figured for playing time's sake, right? And we have this Brandon Sowell player who transferred from um, Michigan over to the Akron Zips. Uh, trust me, I, I don't really know, but he chose to transfer from Michigan, probably playing time, and is now going to be starting for Akron. You want to see something you love to see? Take a look at this. John Hall and Harold Wright, our first team All-Mac. A rainy game at Akron's home field at stadium, going up against an FCS Southeast team. What a deflection right there by Ryan Miller. Friendly reminder, I mean, this whole secondary, that is our guys. These are our guys, Swanson, everyone over here. Swanson makes a big stop, fourth down. Let's go, Swanson, in this defense full of hard knock players, have worked hard like a band of brothers to get to this point. He's got the arm, he's got the legs, as Oliver drops his first chance. Rain may be falling, but we still need our receivers to show up today. Price is just gonna keep this one with his legs. He does have that all around ability, makes a move. Gets a monster run, 24 yards and a first down. Gets an open man up the middle, gets drilled before he can get it off. Price looks injured. That was not a sign we wanted to see as the backup comes in already. Jones, that is absolutely unfortunate. He's gonna have to work hard to get back from that one. As Jones takes over, throws a ball to Novak, first and goal. You hope. Price is good as he was just getting his first taste of action. Jones has a chance now for the job as he hands it off to Marks and six. Price strained his pectoral and that's a minor injury. He'll return to the game later. There we go. Big play in the backfield holding him to one yard. As Hall in the backfield soaks up a block and at least allows 43 to spring on him. Price was determined to get back in this game. He said he's worked far too long to miss the rest of this ball game. I do see our guy across Oliver with another drop. Finds Oliver who finally holds onto the ball for a 10 yard catch. Finds Oliver 
who makes the catch and it makes a move and gets up down into the red zone. Ah, we just gotta throw that one away. Is he down again? Uh-oh. He's hurt again in the red zone. This is the second time he's re-aggravated something in the backup quarterback is in. This is not a healthy sign for the future. Jones called into work, scrambles outside, finds a man, and his receiver does not help him there. Going deep to Oliver. He's got a man. First down. Can he find someone? Finds his running back. Marks holds on to it right at the first and goal. One yard line pretty much there. Is he injured again? And the backup trots out for the third time. Yo, this is a scary, scary, scary sight. I mean, is he going to be good? As we just dump it off for a touchdown to Marks. Snap it. Scramble out to our right. Finds a man. Touchdown, Novak. There it is. Julius Price has been working four years for this moment. His first collegiate touchdown. Dumps it off to his tight end. What a moment in a rainy, rainy Akron. Uh, a shutout here in Akron. 41 zip. Price in his first collegiate start. Does really well. Kentrell Marks is running back, gets three touchdowns in support, but defense was also legit. Uh, this Zips team, I know it's an FCS opponent, but did everything they really sh should have done in week one. Uh, only a couple concerns is Julius, his injury concerns. Is that going to be a lingering thing throughout the year? And two, a couple of those a little bit low awareness interceptions that I threw. Um, but that's, that's more me than him. So, <laughs> oh boy, if we thought FCS was a feel-good story. Well, look at who we got this week. Alabama. Uh, that's going to be a test for Price and this defense. Let's see how we do. Fourth quarter action. Yeah, there's another touchdown. They're just too efficient. But honestly, I'm encouraged. 36-15 against Bama in Alabama. Akron Zips. I mean, I can't be too mad. Let's look at the line. Julius Price, 222 and a touchdown. Not bad. I mean, it's really average but not bad okay julius price i see you end of year four going into the bowl game price 3500 passing yards 30 touchdowns to 13 ints he led the zips to a seven and five record which is which is all right i mean you're bowl eligible you get to go to the famous idaho potato bowl and play on the wolf pack which is always a fun time on the blue so excited to check out price in, in the squad there but i'm encouraged by what i see uh, Price just having a good, good year. And wow, I didn't even take this into consideration. Price as well with 755 rushing yards and three on the ground. Oliver, I was sleeping on you, my friend. 73 overall, put up a 1,400 yard season and 10 touchdowns. Price to Oliver was a connection that just kept on giving. And there he is, Gary Willis. Also, our stud find a defensive end, four and a half sacks, 59 tackles. And there's that man again, John Hall with three picks. Three picks in his first season, three picks in the second. Blake Davis with two big picks as well. Swanson with another one. So we got three stud DBs. It's the famous Idaho Potato Bowl in Boise, Idaho. That is the location of today's game. Nevada Wolfpack, 22nd in the nation, going up against the Akron Zips, the fourth-ranked passing offense in the nation, led by Julius Price, our one-star blue chip find at a high school, along with a cast of defensive one-star gems that we found. So um, this is their big year four. This is their time in Boise to kind of just showcase what they can do. Edwards hunting down the quarterback. Makes the stop with the boys. Taking control of Swanson here. As Wright wrangles him down for a TFL. That's our guy. That's what we saw coming out of high school. The one star. Everyone was sleeping on him. I said, no, this guy's got big play ability. And look at that pursuit. One-on-one -on -one tackle. Strained his shoulder. Willis. Look at Willis go, baby. We like that. Tackle for loss, number 92. Bend, don't break. Wolf pack, go up three zip. Julius Price, a red hot season, quarterbacking the zips, showing people why he belongs in collegiate football. 
and he jumps it off to Marks for a nice first down. Third and 25, back against the wall already. But we do have an open tight end who gets his feet in fourth and seven. That could set us up for a, a go for it scenario. No, nope, don't see it. But we do have a running back. Marks layers his head down, gets the first down, fighting for every last millimeter there. And, oh man, there was someone coming across a bit late and that is a major shot to our quarterback's ribs that we just absolutely hate to see. After a phenomenal season, that could put him out for a little while as backup Jones comes in. Equally as capable, it's just that Julius has been the hot quarterback, so he's cut in the start. All right, Akron without Price, playing inspired football, taking the lead in the fourth quarter over the Wolfpack. Jones has been leading his team. Zero seconds left. That's game. We win the Idaho Potato Bowl in a low-scoring defensive battle. 14 to 10 Jones came in and the team rallied around the unfortunate loss of price to get this team a W in the potato bowl defense held 22nd Nevada at 10 points this is good going into their final year 92 overall for price will that get him on NFL radar uh, let's just hope so I think he's had some good seasons he's got Really good awareness, throw power, accuracy is taking a step up as well. So uh, decent speed as well. He can, he can do a lot. Oliver only staying at a 77 overall, but we know he's got the capability to make some big plays out there. Willis up to an 85 in his final season. Going to be leading this crew. Edwards only got up to a 78, but that's still serviceable and good enough for some collegiate football as Hall and Blake Davis also get to the high 80s. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was not expecting this, but Oliver, after his big year last year, is a preseason second-team All-American. Charles Oliver, the guy actually, I think, out of the whole group, is the lowest overall, and the one I counted out the most, is the second-team All-American, so it goes to show, right? These one-star prospects man, can blossom into something great. And this is a testimony that a one-star, a one-star prospect at a high school recruited by no one else, yet Akron and King Sponge take a chance on him, and he gets to second-team All-American in the preseason. Wow. There he is. There's John Hall again, first-team All-Mac. And Miller gets first-team All-Mac. Second-team All-Mac. There he is, Julius Price coming in. Hot, with the second team award, and Willis finds his way on the board as well with the second team all Mac. So your zips were cruising along in the season, seven and three, week thirteen. I thought everything was fine and dandy, right? Wrong. Broken tibia. Julius Price broke that a while ago, um, so he's been out a long time. He had a very productive season for the one or two games he was in. End of the year conference championship week. The zips were in good hands when Price was gone. Uh, take a look here at the stats. Jones, who came in in relief, threw for 3,270 passing yards, 34 touchdowns, 5 ints. Absolutely killing it. And passing the baton, Price to Jones, it's his team now. Uh, an additional 774 yards on the ground, 9 touchdown scampers. Jones has a bright future, and so does Curtis Frank. My goodness. 76 overall. Something about the 70 overall zip receivers, man. Last year it was Oliver. This year, 139 catches for Curtis Frank. Almost 2,000 yards in 21 touchdowns. These are some Heisman numbers for not only Frank, but for Jones, the quarterback as well. On the defensive side of things, though, it was a storybook ending for Willis six sacks leading the team in sacks 69 tackles getting the job done also had a deflection and two forced fumbles good stuff man Ryan Miller came out and played well with three interceptions two for Harold Wright two for Hall two for Franklin Scott but our guys John Hall Harold Wright and Ryan Miller leading the team in interceptions and look at this Heisman winner Zips quarterback Nick Jones, wow, just waiting for his turn to shine. And the big injury to Julius opened the door 
for a Heisman winning campaign. A snowy game in Boise, Idaho as the Akron Zips take on Nevada. Deja vu all over again. This time there's some snow and this time it's the final year, the fifth year for all of our one star gem prospects that we found. So there was some discussion in the pregame huddle. Uh, I coach King Sponge took Jones aside and talked to him and said, hey man, no doubt you won the job. You are a QB1 here, but uh, we got to show some ceremonial respect to Julius Price in his final game as a senior and for all that he's done for the program, the five years of work he's put in. We decided to give him the last start uh, just for the opening drive. And then of course, Jones, who won the Heisman, it's his job, it's his team. We're giving it right back, but thought we would at least start it off. Nice ball, finding his good old friend Oliver, who when Price played the full year, Oliver was a second team All-American. So this opening drive, we just want to get Price one last drive. Third and 10, we're gonna go find our friend Oliver again, as he picks up a nice first down for us. Using his legs once more. Let's see if he just keeps it and scrambles, gets a nice block and gets out of bounds. 11 yards on the carry. A little read option action. He's got some room. Breaks it down right outside the end zone. I think Price is showing here and showing teams, NFL scouts, all the above that. He's still got some sauce in him that can make big plays, get his team on the board. He doesn't want to give up this, man. He doesn't. Price, 82. He's just getting emotional and choked up thinking about it, man. That was his last collegiate drive and it came out with points. So way to go, Price. Way to cap off your career, your hard-earned, hard-working career. Got to send out the seniors in style, and we got a lot of them here on the Akron defense. Uh, a lot of one-star prospects that got counted out. Big play by number 90, uh, making a tackle for loss there. Big stop by our all-max safety and that's a fourth down. In comes Jones, Heisman winner from this year. Let's see what he's all about. As he slings a ball under heavy pressure, gets it off to Scott for a 19 yard catch and run. Going deep to the end zone, found Gallagher, four six, dumped it in the basket. What a ball over the defender's head and in to Gallagher. Look at that play. Precision on that pass. Proving why he is Heisman after all. All right, simming the remainder of the game, much like the season, Akron in the Zips roll to a decisive win. 38-28. Zips take the Idaho Potato Bowl home for the second straight year. Play of the game goes to Heisman quarterback Jones, dropping a dime to Gallagher for six. Um, all around. It's been a ride as we send the seniors off with a final victory. Congrats to some of these guys that have put in so much work, believed in themselves, believed in this team, and get to cap it off. And just like that, the season is over. Five years in the book, five years of blood, sweat, and tears for our one star hard knocks players. None of them. Declare for the pro draft. Julius Price projected to be undrafted, as well as Edwards, um, some of our you know DBs like Reed and Hall and Davis, as well as Willis. A lot of our guys were just really good collegiate players, but seems like they're going to call it a career and graduate and move on. Hope you all enjoyed this hard knocks twist on NCAA football. I enjoyed creating this content and look forward to bringing more in the near future. So let me know what you thought down below. Drop a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for more. It's been King Sponge, and we out. Yee! Home. I'm on my way. I'm coming.